Unsolved Mysteries. Out of deference to persons who may still be living, character names in some of these true unsolved mysteries have been changed. It is now the very witching time of night when churchyards yawn, and hell itself breathes out contagion to this world. Can anything be more ghastly than murder? Perhaps, if it be the life-crushing burden of doubt, such as in the case of Alan Camel. The scene is just outside the London County Police Station. Unmindful of the tragedies that old building houses, the hurrying, milling crowds sweep by in never-ending stream. In contrast, Alan Camel, reading the morning paper, strolls leisurely by. Hurrying from the opposite direction, the District Commissioner of Police, his eyes fixed on the pavement. Guiding these two men with threads as invisible as they are strong, fate, without whose ruling hand this tale would not be told. Oh, uh, I say, I'm frightfully sorry. Careless of me, banging into you this way. But by Jove, Commissioner, well, I didn't recognize you. Oh, it's all right, old chap. I guess my mind was wool gathering, too. Where are you bound? Just taking a stroll. And you? Going into the police station here to take a look at the morning lineup. Morning lineup? What's that? Come along in and see if you have time. You'll find it interesting. Although something foreign to your sphere of activities. Good morning, Commissioner. Oh, good morning, Sergeant. Oh, Sergeant, this is Mr. Campbell. Glad to know you, sir. Glad to meet you, too, Sergeant. We'll show Mr. Campbell the morning lineup. He's had no experience of the inside of a police station. I wonder, sir. Yes? Uh, would Mr. Campbell object to joining in the lineup? No, I, I don't know. That's up to him. Well, I don't mind. Certainly not. Uh, what do I do? Well, the idea is this, sir. When a crime is committed, we round up all the criminals we can who specialize in that type of crime. I see. But last night, we had a murder. And the elevator boy, the doorman, and the taxi driver have all said they saw a man, a well-dressed man, leaving the apartment yes. house. So we want to get as many different types of men possible in the lineup so that we can get some sort of idea as to what this man, this possible murderer, looks like. For instance, Campbell, the identifying group may say the man we saw had shoulders like number 25, walks like number 15, or had a nose like number 4. Well, smart, what? I'll go in the lineup. Please do it. No, right, boys. We'll start. The commissioner's here. Okay, Sergeant. Get him lined up. Into a long, whitewashed room, its hard walls reflecting the harshness of the bluish-white arc lamps, walks Alan Camel. From the opposite end of the room, a pile of suspicious characters picked up during the night. Camel joins the end of the line as the group, their backs to the wall, stand erect against the lines of measurement. The sergeant brings in the three identifying witnesses. Slowly they walk past the lineup. First the taxi driver, then the elevator boy, thirdly the doorkeeper. Each in turn hesitates a moment... Then stepping in front of Camel... That's the man. This is the man. He's the man I saw. I'm sorry, gentlemen. There must be some mistake. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Campbell. Just a case of mistaken identity. That will be all just now, Sergeant. Okay, boys. That's all for just now. Come along, Campbell. You've had enough experience of police methods for today. Into my office here. Have a drink? Yes, I guess you will. Rather nerve-wracking, isn't it? Oh, yes, it is. To be identified as a murderer... By the way, who was it that was killed? Why, I don't know. I look on the report. Uh, Robert Julian. Robert Julian? Are you certain? Where did he live? Bathurst Department. Good heavens. You 
You know him? Uh, yes, I, I know. I rather knew him very well. Mm. Went to school with him. He served under me during the war. We were both members of the same club. Oh, I say, I'm frightfully sorry, old chap, to have been responsible for giving you such a shock this way. Oh, uh, don't blame yourself, Commissioner. You, you couldn't be expected to know. However, I, if you don't mind, I, I think I'll run along. Why, not in the slightest. Have another drink before you go. Uh, no, thanks. Uh, really. In almost a daze, Camel steps out onto Marlboro Road, hails a passing taxi cab, and is driven out to Mayfair. Outside the Bathurst apartments, he dismisses the taxi, but hesitates as to whether or not he should go up to Julian's apartment. Finally, his heart pounding against his ribs, he tenses himself and walks down the hallway. Yes? This is... It's Alan. Alan? Alan Campbell. Oh, come in. I mean, I... I don't know what to say. I... I just learned just now that Bob had been... Had... Uh, was dead. Sit down and calm yourself, Alan. But I can't calm myself. I've just had the horrible experience of being identified as his murderer. Where? At the police station. Oh, Alan, how did they find out? Find out? What, what on earth do you mean? You you don't have to deny it to me, Alan. Deny what? Is everybody crazy? Alan, I I came home about two this morning and found and found Bob dead. Lying beside him where the slip from the murderer's pocket was this. I put it in my handbag. Good Lord. My cigarette case. Then can you think that I killed him? Didn't you threaten to kill him? Yes, if he ever harmed you, but how did you know that? Bob left a package to be opened at his death. I, I opened it. It told how, how he'd lied to me about you. How he'd tricked me into breaking off our engagement. And he, he actually gloried in writing all the horrible details. Then he went on to say that if, if ever he came to a violent death, you'd be his murderer. Because you'd told him that if he ever hurt me, harmed me, or was unkind to me, you'd kill him. It's all true. For years, I, I've hated him. That's why I avoided him. Every time I set eyes on him, I realized what he'd done and that... Oh, perhaps I should have told you, but you wouldn't have believed me. How could you be expected to? But, Eileen, I, I didn't kill him. How do you account for your cigarette? Oh, I, I don't know. I... May I use your phone? Yes, Alan. Give me Tottenham 22678. Yes, please. Oh, hello, Dobbs. Listen, Dobbs. When did I get home last night? About seven. That's right. Did I go out again? No? Huh? Good. I knew I hadn't, but... Uh... Oh, yes, Dobbs. Look in the gun room, will you? And tell me, has anything been disarranged? Yes, you can call me at Mayfair 4396. And you see, Dobbs says I wasn't out all evening. Dobbs would commit perjury for you, Alan. But he's no reason to. He, he doesn't know anything. Why should he say that I was home all evening if I weren't? Dobbs is the world's greatest diplomat, I know. But Eileen, don't you see? I, I'm not lying when I say that I didn't kill Bob. I, I might have, in a blind rage. I don't know, but not in cold blood. Uh, shall I or you? You answer. Yes? Oh, yes, Dobbs. What's that? Can't understand it. Can't understand what? Yes? Yes? Good heavens. Uh, uh, yes, yes, by all means. Clean it. I, I'll, I'll explain when I get home. What is it? Dobbs. Dobbs says my my forty-five has been moved. Used. One bullet fired. Oh, Alan. Oh, this is horrible. Ghastly. To... To kill a man is bad enough, but, but to kill him and not even remember it, I don't know anything about it. I, to go for the rest of my life, wondering, doubting, never knowing, always wondering. In just a moment, you will hear a solution to the Alan Camel mystery. <laughs>
gentlemen, inasmuch as any solution must of necessity be supposition, liberties of time, place, and character have been taken in the solution for which you have been waiting. The scene is the police commissioner's home, and the commissioner, accompanied by the sergeant from the Marlborough station, are seated before the fire, talking as Alan Camel enters. Oh, good evening, Campbell. Good evening. Uh, sit down here by the fire. That's it. Now, what's on your mind? I hardly know where to start. I, I call you, Commissioner, and ask you to invite the sergeant over because of what happened this morning. Oh, my dear chap, forget the whole business. We know you didn't kill Robert Julian, but that's it. It, it seems that I did. What? what? I went to his apartment after I left the police station. His wife was there, and she gave me this. A cigarette case? Yes, mine. I, she found it lying beside her husband's body. Out with the rest of it, Campbell. Julian and I were in love with the same woman. She was engaged to me. He tricked her into believing that I was carrying on with another woman. Yes. And she broke off our engagement, and I... You... You threatened Julian? I did. I told him that if he ever hurt her, I'd kill him. Recently, he's been... Well, he'd gone back to his old tricks, neglecting her and all the rest of it. It's been on my mind. But I've not the slightest recollection of doing anything. If I killed him, I don't know about it. You... Uh, you've gone over in your mind when you were alone, brooding just how you would kill him? Yes, I admit that. Then that's the explanation. Your subconscious mind has taken possession of your physical body to commit murder without your ever being aware of the fact. What is that possible? It won't be the first time. It's because of the subconscious power of the physical body that the murderer very often revisits the scene of his crime. Then you think, you really think that I killed Julian? Yes, frankly, I do. Then there's nothing else, is there, except the formal arrest? I'm not going to arrest you. And I don't think the sergeant is either. Not me, sir. But I, I don't... In the first place, I don't believe a jury would convict you. In the second place, I'm not going to give them a chance. And so, insofar as the people of London were concerned, Alan Camel's name was never mentioned. And the murder of Robert Julian was an unsolved mystery. Oh. 